Welcome back to Sunday Night in America. While the missiles and drones were still in midair last night, Iran made a point to say the attack was revenge for the IDF strike in Syria that killed their top generals, that the matter was, quote, concluded in their minds. But Iran has been provoking conflict in the region for decades, so it did not start and will not likely end with the events of last night. But what is Iran trying to signal, and what should we make of Iran warning the U.S. to stay away? The exiled Iranian crown prince, His Royal Highness Reza Pahlavi, joins us now. Welcome, Your Highness. What did you make evening, of the Iranian response last night? And what do you think was meant by the matter has been concluded? Well, Trey, these are signs of the regime becoming more weak and desperate. Uh, and as a matter of fact, at the very same time that it launched its uh, missiles and drones against Israel, it has cracked down yet again on Iranian women on the streets of Iran. The ministry of uh, the, the intelligence uh, 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 part of the uh, SEPA or uh, the IRGC has warned people in Iran that the slightest demonstration of sentiment uh, and sympathy to the Israelis will be harshly treated. They are ex extremely afraid of what the Iranian people think, and as a result, it's only indicating that, uh, as we have always uh, believed, the regime is trying to hang on to power by intimidation and repression at home and exercising, through its proxies, or this time directly by itself, its uh, conflict abroad. Uh, sir, if my memory serves me correctly, you visited Israel, and you believe the Iranian people and the Israeli people can coexist in peace. What will it take to make that happen? Well, from, from Tehran to Tel Aviv, from Hamadan to uh, Haifa, uh, Iranians and Israelis know that this is not the Iranian people's war. This is Ali Khamenei, is the dictator of this cr uh, brutal regime's war. Uh, as we speak, uh, uh, Trey, today there were demonstrations in Paris, in London, in Ber Berlin. Uh, Iranians, together with uh, Israelis and Jews, hand in hand together, uh, supporting uh, each other. And, and demonstrating to the whole world that we as a nation and Israel as a nation have our destiny intertwined. Uh, we cannot hope for any chance for peace and stability in the region until this regime is finally gone. I think it's important for the world to realize that the only obstacle to peace and stability and a better future lies on putting an end to this regime. It is time for the world to finally decide to endorse and back the Iranian people to topple this regime and put an end to all this madness. You know, you mentioned regime change. Many of us found it stunning that Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer called for regime change in Israel, uh, but they've been pretty silent on regime change in Iran. Well, what can or should the U.S. do to support the Iranian people uh, to have a different government, a government that doesn't do the things that you just described, especially to women? Well, look, when you release money to a regime and give it more means to finance its proxies and, uh, and use brutality at home, uh, basically, uh, appeasement has proven that it only emboldens the regime. We said that a long time ago. In fact, uh, as you indicated uh, last year when I visited Israel, part of our uh, discussions with uh, Israeli leaders and, for that matter, other uh, leaders around the world has been precisely this. If you let the regime be emboldened by the fact that they can count on appeasement or paying ransom for the release of hostages or not imposing all sanctions, which get gave the regime almost an extra $100 billion, the fact that the current administration is trying to release even yet more money to the regime, about $10 billion of Iranian electricity revenue uh, from the Iraqis, what do you think is going to happen next? I think there's a direct correlation between appeasement and, and doing these kind of things and the, uh, the regime becoming emboldened. The solution, again, is to use every opportunity to put more pressure on the regime. For instance, it is time that uh, the United States allies in Europe finally decides to put the IRGC on the terrorist group list, and that would mean more pressure on the regime. But also, parallel to that, it is time to use, uh, use maximum support to the Iranian people 
in their struggle against this regime. It is the Iranian people's ask to have change. It doesn't have to be a U.S. senator saying who needs to change. If the Iranian people are saying loud and clear, we are done with this regime, help us liberate ourselves, that's the message that the Iranian people have to the entire world. And I hope that the U.S. government and other governments will heed this call and finally uh, help us uh, save our uh, world from disaster and more conflict and have an opportunity post this regime to have regional peace and brotherly uh, cooperation, not just Iran and Israel, but the, the Arab world, too, that has also been a target of this regime. Your, Honor, your Royal Highness, thank you for joining us on a Sunday night and loaning us your truly unique perspective on Iran. Thank you. Thank you, Trey. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.